Now my pleasure to introduce uh, Mr Philip Honeywood, the member for Warrandyte. Once again we have a member with an interest in the environment. It seems to me strange, as soon as we get into a place where there's a few trees, all the environmentalists join us. <laughs> but it is a nice environment out here. Mr Honeywood is the Liberal Party spokesman on conservation and the environment, and uh, locally, among other things, a member of the Croydon Conservation Society. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr Philip Honeywood. Peter Coman, President of Swinburne Council, Madam Premier, my Federal and State Parliamentary colleagues, friends of Swinburne, friends of the Outer Eastern University. Today is a special day and I think the apt words are that victory has many parents. And if you excuse the pun on this special day, Madam Premier, this birth has been a long time in the Labor waiting room. But uh, having, 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 having said that, I can say this, that particularly on behalf of the Honourable Bob Charles and the Honourable Rosemary Varty, who since day one have been the only other politicians along with me on the Outer Eastern University Planning Council, we are indeed very proud with the end result. And let us look for a moment at some of the other parents here today. I believe in the audience today is a single mother by the name of Verena, and uh, she, some three years ago, or two and a half years ago, arrived at my electorate office knowing my involvement in trying to get this university going and said, look, what can, what, what can we do? We've got to do something. She was a frustrated student. She had no access because she had young children to university or tertiary education. Let's face it, people, it's a long way to La Trobe University. It's a long way to Monash University from here. And so we got together a petition and she hopped in the Volkswagen, I believe it was, and she went through the hills and she dropped off that petition at every primary school, every high school in sight. And she is truly one of the parents <laughs> of this campus here today. Equally, I think the Swinburne academics, who so often are criticised like other academics for living in ivory towers, so-called ivory towers, they deserve a great deal of praise because many of them here today, and I can see a lady hiding there in the red sweater down the back, stood with me at sh local shopping centres and informed people about what Swinburne were trying to do out here. And we got more signatures on that petition. And I think one of the proudest moments of my parliamentary career, Madam Premier, was to actually table that petition of some 5,000 signatures in Parliament calling on this campus to be opened. And uh, it was a very proud moment indeed. I think that when you are very close to an issue, it's very difficult often to stand back and, and speak about it with any objectivity. But I think most of all, Mr Bruce MacDonald and Dr Ian Wallace deserve particular support and appreciation today because, again, unlike so many other academics, they have pestered, they have pounded on doors, they have done everything conceivable to try and get this uh, institution up and running out here and they deserve a particular tribute. I think Bruce MacDonald's been everything out here from caretaker to parking attendant to... <laughs> to um, uh, lo lobbing grenades when we're, we're, we're appropriate. You, you've done it all, Bruce, and you really deserve our appreciation. And I think that really today, ladies and gentlemen, and also local government, uh, members from local government have been very supportive as well, I should add. But today, as far as I'm concerned, marks the maturity of the Outer East as a community because we've been, and I'm, I'm sure the Premier would have great knowledge of this <laughs> given um, her domiciled some years ago in North Croydon. But the fact is that this area has been a community which has been growing for some years. And it's been a community where a lot of people have moved out, bought their first home, and then turned around and had to move in closer to the city uh, when their children have got, got a bit older in age and needed to uh, have better education facilities, uh, higher education, whatever. Well, today, I think, marks the coming of age of the Outer East as a community because with a university now, we can proudly say that we've got all the building blocks, all the foundation stones together to go forward as a true community in this region and I think the future is unlimited. The final thing I'd like to say is that I studied at the Australian National University in Canberra and I think one of the wonderful aspects of that campus is the tree environment and the fact that you could hop on a push bike and pedal to lectures and so on. Well, here today, when you look around, and I do hope that those of you who haven't been here before take the opportunity to walk around, to talk to some of the students here, I think you'd agree with me 
that you couldn't have a better environment in terms of being conducive to study. And that's what it's all about, making sure our students are not only the best educated, but they actually enjoy <laughs> their time whilst spent studying. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr Honeywood. Could I also ask you to take that? Thank you. As mentioned by Mr Honeywood, we do hope that you do have a look around while you're here, those that haven't visited the campus before. And I understand Bruce has uh, got some guides uh, up at the entrance where you came in. And if anyone would like to have a conducted tour around, then you're free and we'd like you to have a look around.